Yes, 8K helium raw red footage. Can I play it? Look! Oh my god, it's a fool! Woo! Oh no, that was a bit mature. It can play it at half though. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Plays it at half. Right, I tell you, I'm going to tell you the difference between this generation PC versus last generation. We're talking about the top of the line 8700K with a 1080 Ti versus a 9900K and a 2080 Ti. These are the top gaming systems you could have got from last generation to this generation. And I'm going to be testing it in gaming. Yes, I'll tell you the difference in gaming. I'm just testing as an overall system. I'm not testing specifically the graphics card or the CPU just overall which system is more powerful and of course you got to remember that the new 9900k has an extra two cores so i've overclocked them both five gigahertz on the cpu side and two gigahertz on the gpu side now i will mention that i'm going to be testing lightroom photoshop premiere pro not just gaming and that's more important to me i really want to know how they go in content creation right now i'm just playing on the 2080 ti black ops um, blackout and i've just overclocked the gpu a little bit it's not really overclocked but i'm still running at five gigahertz with the cpu let's talk about gaming first okay i'm going to give you some benchmarks in a minute get on to content creation later i game at 1440p and i've decided to benchmark at 1440p the reason why is is if I benchmark at 4K, I'm just telling you what GPU is faster. And if I'm benchmarking at 1080p, I'm probably just telling you what CPU is faster. So I think 1440p is a great sort of in between. It's sort of just going to give you a good indication how fast the overall system is compared to the other one at 1440p. I think it's a very good way to do it. Let's just talk about gaming. So when it comes to gaming, I can tell you the difference in the benchmarks, right? there is a difference and i'll put the benchmark scores up but here's the thing right both these systems i cannot tell the difference when i game all right i cannot tell the difference i can tell the difference in the benchmark i can look at the benchmark so oh, yeah it's a bit faster but i can crank these up at 1440p both to ultra and i'm getting frame rates in this game for example well in excess of 120 frames and once you get to 120 frames you know 120 140 are you going to notice the difference? I can't freaking notice the difference. Literally cannot tell the difference. They feel the same. They're both smooth. They're both the same amount of detail. So honestly, if you're talking about gaming, I wouldn't even worry. I mean, yeah, on the benchmarks, you can see it's faster. But <laughs> seriously, I cannot freaking tell the difference. Both are top of the line gaming machines. I think you want to know more how it is for content creation. But firstly, I just want to address gaming again. Now, usually with a 2018, Ti versus 1080 Ti, you usually get around 30% at 4K difference. Here we're seeing around 30% difference at 1440p. Now with 1440p, there still is a little bit of CPU bottleneck there. So obviously the i9 is giving me a boost in performance because usually you don't see a 30% difference at 1440p with a 2080 Ti versus 1080 Ti. Obviously the CPU is making up that difference to get me to that 30% again. Now that's both at five gigahertz. When it comes to temperatures, the temperature on the 8700K is much better. I mean, I can get that under 70 degrees, but that is deleted. With the i9 9900K, it's not deleted. And and gaming at 5 gigahertz it can go up to 80 degrees sometimes a little bit more if you're talking all core burst i can still control the i7 under 80 degrees no problems at 5 gigahertz with the i9 which i said is not deleted yeah you're running into the high 80s into the 90s all core burst in something like cinebench or like low fft's prime 95 so the i9 makes a difference for gaming so when it comes to cinebench not much to see here it's got an extra two cores i expect this you know this is nearly 30 percent difference there one 1554 versus 2203 both at 5 gigahertz of course nice 30 percent boost there this is very interesting with lightroom exporting 75 raws to jpegs have a look at those laptops wow they are so competitive with the i7 8700k very competitive aren't they but have a look at that i9 9900k one minute and 20 seconds versus one minute and 46 seconds that's a 17 percent difference right there and this continues with all the content creation when it comes to content creation the i9 and the combination of a 2080 ti just kills it 
And if we have a look at exports there, we're getting that same roughly 18% difference there. 1 minute 22 versus 1 minute 49. So for content creation, it is the king, as you'd expect. So when it comes to the Puget System Photoshop benchmark, here we can see a difference of around 10%. But if you have a look at the GPU score, it's around 25% difference. So overall 10% different, and that's doing a lot of things. It's using the CPU, it's using the GPU, just merging photos, etc. You can download this benchmark. I'll leave a link in the description. Great to test your systems, but a nice boost there with the i9 9900K and 2080 Ti. Now, when it comes to SpecView Per 13, now this tests a lot of different 3D applications. So this will give you a good indication on how these will perform, you know, with 3D Max, Maya, and, you know, complex models in these medical applications. And as you can see with these scores, there's a nice boost, as you'd expect with the RTX 2080 Ti over the 1080 Ti. But I was not expecting, with Medical 2, doubled the performance. 2x performance increase there. Usually it's like, you know, 30% or whatever it is, but 2x performance increase, wow. Is that the extra two cores or is it the GPU as well? I'm not sure, but for whatever reason, we're getting 2X on one of those benchmarks there. So you can compare that to your own system, screenshot that. When it comes to video editing, very interesting here because I actually sold my i9-7900 with a Titan X to actually get this i9 with an RTX 2080 Ti because the render times, right? It actually renders faster than a 10 core 7900X. Now, of course, this is overclocked the 9900K. It would be closer if I overclocked the 7900X. But if you look at the i9 versus the i7, so 9900K versus 7700K, you can see there 30% difference, you know, 4 minutes 28 versus 6 minutes in rendering with this sample project. Now, what's interesting here is when you enable hardware encoding, which uses pretty much QuickSync or uses the Intel GPU on the CPU, which the 7900K does does not have so you cannot hardware encode with that you'll see there's virtually no difference four minutes and six seconds versus four minutes and ten so when you hardware encode it takes away all the advantage of those extra two cores so if rendering is the most important thing to you and say premiere and this is going to be different for different applications but certainly in premiere there's really no difference getting a i7 with a 1080 ti versus an i9 with a 2080 ti but in the timeline there's the big difference because the i9 7900x cannot play red raw footage at half neither can the i7 gtx 1080 ti and the only CPU that could actually do that was the 14 core. The 14 core X series Intel processor was the only CPU, even if you compare it to a 32 core Threadripper or an 18 core X series Intel processor, it was the only one because the combination of cores and clock speed, it was the only one that could actually do it. Now this i9-9900K with the RTX 2080 Ti actually plays back red raw footage at half so there's only two cpus that can do that now the 14 core x series on the x299 platform and the i9 9900k now of course with the x series or the x299 platform you can have up to 128 gigs ram actually you can put 512 gigs in there and you can use ecc ram if you get the right motherboard you get more pci lane i was probably better off just getting that 14 core and sticking with the x299 platform because rendering is not a big deal for me and the advantages you get with the x299 platform of having you know more pci lanes the motherboards are better because they just have more on them and if i get say the gigabyte design air motherboard i could use 512 gigabytes of ecc memory so, so i'm pretty much maxed out with this i9 9900 case i don't know if i made the right choice only time will tell so anyway if you liked this video please give me a thumbs up if you're new around here come on get on the woo train subscribe and until next time guys Tally ho.